Hello West House. I'm here today as part of the West House Reads series. Uh, you'll notice I don't have a book uh, in my hands. I have an iPad. Just to show you, there are lots and lots of different ways that you can read. So I will be reading my chosen book on this iPad. I do that through an app called Kindle. Some of the older boys in school might know about that. Very good way to get a book when the shops aren't open. Now, the book I've chosen to read to you today is called Revolting Rhymes, and it's a book by Roald Dahl. Now, I've chosen this book because I remember being a young boy in year four, and my teacher, Mr. Devil, did a round read, that's what I called it, where we read around the class, each reading a part of the book, and I remember being really excited when it came to my opportunity to read what was James and the Giant Peach. Also, a few years back, uh, visiting my wife's nan, uh, Irene, I remember in the care home, in the corner of the room, in their book stand was this book. Uh, and I remember the nurses would read it uh, to the ladies and the gentlemen who were there, and they would really enjoy it. And that just proves that whether young or old, you can really enjoy all books, but I think particularly this one. So I'm going to be reading Roald Dahl, and I'm going to read a poem from his book entitled Revolting Rhymes. Thank you. Revolting Rhymes, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Had I the chance, I wouldn't fail to clap young Goldilocks in jail. Now you imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal. Delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. With maybe toast and marmalade, the table beautifully laid. One place for you and one for dad, another for your little lad. Then dad cries, golly gosh, gee whiz, oh cripes, how hot this porridge is. Let's take a walk along the street until it's cool enough to eat. He adds an early morning stroll is good for people on the whole. It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your bowels to move. No proper wife would dare to question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time when men are seldom at their prime. No sooner are you down the road than Goldilocks, that little toad, that nosy, thieving little louse, comes sneaking in your empty house. She looks around. She quickly notes three bowls brimful of porridge oats. And while still standing on her feet, she grabs a spoon and starts to eat. I say again, how would you feel if you had made this lovely meal and some delinquent little tot broke in and gobbled up the lot. But wait, that's not the worst of it. Now comes the most distressing bit. You are, of course, a house proud wife and all your happy married life. You had collected lovely things like gilded cherubs wearing wings and furniture by Chippendale bought at some famous auction sale. But your most special valued treasure, that piece that gives you endless pleasure, is one small children's dining chair, Elizabethan, very rare. It is in fact your joy, your pride, passed down to you on grandma's side. But Goldilocks, like many freaks, does not appreciate antiques. She doesn't care, she doesn't mind, and now she plonks her fat behind upon this dainty precious chair, and crunch, it busts beyond repair. A nice girl would at once exclaim, oh dear, oh heavens, what a shame. Not Goldie. No, she begins to swear. She bellows, what a lousy chair, and uses one disgusting word that luckily you've never heard. I dare not write it, even hint it. Nobody would even print it. You'd think by now this little skunk would have the sense to do a bunk. But no, I very much regret she hasn't nearly finished yet. Deciding she would like a rest, she says, let's see which bed is best. Upstairs she goes and tries all three. Here comes the next catastrophe. Most educated people choose to rid themselves of socks and shoes. 
before they clamber into bed, but Goldie didn't give a shred. Her filthy shoes were thick with grime and mud and mush and slush and slime. Worse still, upon the heel of one was something that a dog had done. I say once more, what would you think if all this horrid dirt and stink was smeared upon your elder down by this revolting little clown. The famous story has no clues to show the girl removed her shoe. Oh, what a tale of crime on crime. Let's check it for a second time. Crime won the prosecution's case. She breaks and enters someone's place. Crime two, the prosecutor notes, she steals a bowl of porridge oats. Crime three, she breaks a precious chair belonging to the baby bear. Crime four, she smears each spotless sheet with filthy messes from her feet. A judge would say without a blink, ten years hard labour in the clink. But in the book, as you will see, the little beast gets off scot-free, while tiny children near and far shout, goody good, hooray, hurrah. Poor darling Goldilocks, they say, thank goodness that she got away. Myself, I think I'd rather send young Goldie to a sticky end. Oh, Daddy, cried the baby bear, my porridge is gone, it isn't fair. Then go upstairs, the big bear said. Your porridge is upon the bed. But as it's inside Mademoiselle, you'll have to eat her up as well. And that is a rather different take of Goldilocks and the three bears. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed telling it. Bella enjoyed listening to it. And I'll see you soon.